Now it's my great pleasure to bring forward to you one of the folks who have taught me about the importance of connection and that we're not all separate from each other. A great voice and a, a great person uh, in this area who's leading us uh, in this area. Uh, Joanna Macy, she's a scholar of Buddhism. She's um, also uh, very knowledgeable about general systems theory and deep ecology. She's a respected voice in the movement for peace. That's enough. No? That's enough. Joanna Macy! Joanna Macy! I think that we're a little behind in our schedule, and so I'll just take a couple of minutes. I want to tell you how, like each one of you, I so appreciate getting this blast of information and energy, this jolt to the heart, this strengthening of our will as we hear these wonderful voices. To feel again the urgency, to be called again to remember the unspeakable that, yes, this country, my country, was the first and only so far to use nuclear weapons and far outstrips all other countries in their nuclear programs. We're confronting our shame. We're confronting our solidarity as well. We're feeling the urgency, so it's a good we come for this. We hear that we're too few. We hear that we're too old. But we're here. And there are a lot of us here around the country and around the world gathering on this Hiroshima day. And I just want to take a moment from looking at the horrifying statistics and plans of this administration. I would rather just take a minute and hold up a mirror in which we can see and I, you can see. And I say, when I say you, I'm talking about all the people gathering on this Hiroshima morning that this not happen again, even in this more desperate time, probably than any since then. And I want to hold up a mirror so that you can see your moral beauty. As dark as it gets, you keep on. You keep on explaining, almost like as the poet said, mad-eyed with stating the obvious, we don't want to blow up our world have the stomach to keep on even though people change the topic, turn away. We've heard that before. You're still talking about that. Haven't we solved it still? Trying to raise money so that we can send people to talk to gently, patiently, to talk to Congress people, to talk to the war planners, to talk to the legislators in Washington explaining over and over again, as the poet said, almost mad-eyed with having to state over and over the, the obvious. And we keep on, you keep on. So I am reminded, I'm thinking of how when in the early 1940s, Enrico Fermi caused a, the atom's kernel of the, of the nucleus of the atom, which had been <coughs> that bonding power that holds the neutrons and protons together. That one thing that cannot be broken, that kind of holds our universe together. 
you can manage with the biggest nucleus, which is that of the uranium atom. It's kind of big, and, but you can knock off a proton and then cause a chain reaction. And what happened that's the most telling for us sometimes, I think, is not the chain reaction that ensued, but the release of the strongest binding power in the universe. It's like the glue that holds the material world. Or it's not really a material world. This active, interactive, dynamic world together has been released. And I thought of that when, in the early years of the Reagan administration, in some interviews I was doing, the first one was with a professor of psychology in a university. And he was talking to me about how he would cross the campus and sometimes just clicking see the campus in rubble after a nuclear attack. And he said, what's the matter with me? I feel as if I'm becoming unglued. And then I heard that more and more from people in their own experience and then the feeling of our world becoming fragmented incoherent, losing its coherence. <coughs> and it occurs to me that this work that we all are doing, hard and lonely as it sometimes is, knowing how much more there is to do, that you, you all across the world, working to stop to prevent a nuclear war, you are like the glue of our world. You're weaving it back together. And even if we fail, we have been weaving life back together to the best of our ability. And I bow to that, you weavers of life. Oh, <laughs> 